And welcome back to News On. I'm Miranda Khan, CEO and founder of Stock Swoosh, Melissa Armo, and attorney and Democratic strategist Ken Altshuler. Join us for our bipartisan panel today. Good to see you both. Good to be here. Good uh, so we were just speaking with Ben Burkwam, our contributor, who is there on the southern border, on the Mexico side of it, uh, getting his reaction to what he is seeing on the border. They're still seeing that influx. We've been covering this story uh, for months now, uh, sending him out there. Uh, we've also talked about recently that there were 50,000 people that were supposedly let into this country. There's no way of really keeping track of them. And then we just got inside directly um, about Vice President Kamala Harris's strategy. She just released that today. It's pretty much a, a one-page document, if you will. Uh, it seems to be uh, a little lacking there, but I, I want to get your thoughts on that, Ken. It seems to be, and, and I just want to get your opinion on this, is this just regurgitating talking points that we've already heard from the Biden administration? Well, you know, I've been I've been critical of the Biden administration, and I'm a big fan of Kamala Harris, but I, I've been disappointed with the way she's handled this. Her one trip to the uh, to the border three months after being appointed the czar was disappointing. Yeah, it is talking points. At least it's something. But I'm not one to say, you know, token gestures are progress. So I'm disappointed in it. I think it is regurgitating. I mean, we know that you have to make the Central America a more fiscally responsible environment for people. You need to get rid of graft in governments. Uh, and, and the Biden administration has been doing something toward that end. You know, you have to have some kind of policies with real results and real action. So. I give this maybe a D plus. I'm not real enthused by it. It's a step, but too little. I guess I would say too little, too late. I'd like to see much more concrete plans and and goals in mind, and I'm not seeing that, and I'm disappointed. And it's going to hurt the Democrats in 2022, as I've said every time I've been on the show. We've talked about it, Melissa. Well, I agree with him that it is going to hurt the Democrats in 2022 because this is a big issue. One of the reasons it's such a big issue right now is because of the fact that we still have COVID. These people are coming in. They're not testing them. Some of the people have already said that there's people that have COVID. They've been getting COVID going into Texas. Why aren't we testing these people? Why are we letting people come in from foreign countries when we still have a pandemic? And now they're talking about cases going up. They want to remass people. We're in the middle of a pandemic. Whether or not they want to help other foreign countries, we have enough problems here right now in our own in the United States of America. I don't think we should be worrying about anybody else right now but this country. We had bad economic data that came out today, worse than expected. And we'll see how the market yeah. reacts to that at the end of the week. We don't need any more of these problems. We want to stop COVID. And when you have people coming in across the border and you don't know where they're coming from, and you don't know what diseases they have, and then they're shipping them all over the place. They're not just coming into Texas and California. They're some, some of the people they're saying they're sending to the middle, country, uh, middle states, and even New York. Well, that's spreading coronavirus if in fact they have it, which of course we don't know, The people aren't getting tested. But I heard cases um, that were uh, in Texas that they feel like it was spreading in Texas that I think it was one of the local, uh, sheriffs had talked about it. He said, we didn't know. We yes. didn't know these people yeah. were coming. Were, that they were being released. I know exactly what you're talking about, which is why we mentioned at the top of the show that the governor of Texas uh, issuing that executive order saying that they can't just be dropped off here. Uh, we'll continue to monitor that situation. But speaking of health, and we are going to get to COVID in just a minute, but I want to talk about California because it has now just become the first state in the nation to provide taxpayer-funded health benefits to elderly illegal immigrants. So California will provide $75 million in disaster relief assistance. This historic move is expected to cost California taxpayers at least $1.3 billion. Ken. Smart oh, you're move? killing me. You're killing me this afternoon, Miranda, because this is another thing <laughs> I as liberal don't agree with. I don't think you give benefits to illegal uh, illegal immigrants. I mean, You've got to be in the country legally to get American benefits, and and I'm all for helping people in need, but you can't just make this an open pocketbook, and particularly in California, and particularly when they're, they have a surplus because of government funding because of COVID, and I understand you can use it for what you want, but no, you can't give something to someone who's here 
illegally. We have to improve the system, improve the immigration system, get people processed quicker, give asylum when necessary. But don't give handouts. It's not good policy. It tax our economy. And as Melissa said, we have some financial issues here. Why compound it? So I don't agree with it. And as a liberal, I think this is a bad way to go. I really am not in favor of it. Well, keep breathing because uh, we still have more to get to. Uh, so, Melissa, I want to get your thoughts on that because there are so many Americans right now that can't afford their day-to-day -day expenses as it is. You know, you've already got the president trying to extend that um, eviction moratorium right now. There are plenty of people watching this program right now who can't afford health insurance. And now you have the people in California, probably many of them, who can't afford their own health insurance, but now we're going to be taxed to provide health insurance and health benefits to people who don't have the legal right to be in this country to begin with. Your thoughts? Well, if I was a California resident, I would be angry about this, because to be honest with you, the health care system changed and insurance pre premiums went up. And a lot of healthcare companies went under when the Affordable Care Act went through. That This is years and years ago now. I mean, the rates for insurance, like, as, a, as a healthy single female, I can't, if I told you my rate, you'd fall right off your chair right now because I own my own business. If you work for a company, you can get a cheaper price if you're in with a big group plan. But if you're an individual or you own your own small business and you have to pay for health care, the costs are astronomical. And it's been that way since the Affordable Care Act. So that's across the board. But as far as California goes, California is a disaster. They are trying to do a, an election to recall the governor there. I don't know if Larry Elder, who's running against him, is going to win, but he's got a shot. He's got a shot. People are upset. People are leaving California. They are tired of this nonsense. They are tired of being taxed. I think it's one of the worst states as far as these things go. And it's hard to say that because I live in New York and we have a lot of problems here. But California has serious, serious problems. They're losing residents. Who is going to pay for this? One of the things about the illegals that are here, I know some of them are working. And some of them are working under the table. And some of them are working with, with EIN numbers or illegal Social Security numbers that aren't yours. The problem is they're not filing tax returns. They're not paying taxes. They're not paying into the system. Even though, even though some of them are working here, they're not paying in. So it's really not fair to the people that do file every year and do pay in and their paychecks every single week. Well, I'd love to know for the viewers that are watching, if you live in California, would love to know your thoughts on this. Or maybe perhaps you moved away from California for the very reasons that Melissa just mentioned there. I know that's one of the reasons why Ben Burkwam, who's on this very network, uh, left California and moved to Arizona. So I'd love to know your thoughts. You can always do that by finding me at Real Miranda Khan on social media, hashtag share your voice. So I want to get into this, and we're probably going to have to get your reaction coming up after the commercial break. But Obviously, I want to talk about COVID. So as we learned yesterday, CDC now recommending vaccinated individuals, including children, uh, K through 12, wear masks indoors. Uh, we've talked about Congress now enacting that mask mandate, all of this to protect against the new Delta variant. Uh, but according to the CDC director, uh, Rochelle Walensky, there's not evidence, though, when it comes to justifying children masking in schools. Let's take a listen. Now, the Delta variant isn't making kids any sicker, per se, is it? Because the statistics, as the studies have come back from children and COVID, what, from the UK, uh, what did we learn there? Some 99.995% of the 470,000 children in England infected survived. I mean, that's an incredible survival rate. The Delta variant isn't making kids any sicker, is it? We don't have any evidence that is doing... So we don't have any evidence. Uh, I'm going to ask both of you because we're coming up on a commercial break and I want to give you adequate time to respond to this because this is a story that's affecting everyone in this country. So Melissa, Ken, stick around. We're going to talk about that. We're also going to talk about that bipartisan agreement that happened late last night on infrastructure as 17 Republicans voting in favor of it, including Mitch McConnell. Uh, not making uh, former President Donald Trump all too happy what he has to say about it and why for once, I think him and AOC are in agreement. We're going to explain that coming up. You're watching News On.